Well, hi, YouTubers. I'm back with a six month sixty books, and it is Angel by Elizabeth Taylor, not the actress Elizabeth Taylor, a writer called Elizabeth Taylor. I read a bit of, of her blurb, okay? Elizabeth Taylor was born in Reading, Berkshire, in 1912. Her first novel, Mrs. Lippincott, appeared in 1945 and was followed by 11 more, Get with some short stories, which were published in various periodicals. Taylor's shrewd but affectionate portrayal of middle class and upper class English lives soon won her a discriminating audience as well as staunch friends in the world of letters. Rosamond Lehman wrote, she is a sophisticated, sensitive and brilliantly amusing if a kind of strict, piercing feminine wit. Elizabeth Taylor died in 1975. Okay, so not the actress, just a fantastic, fantastic writer. Now, I knew of this vaguely because I saw this film a couple of years ago. And um, the film does not do the book justice. The book is just amazing. I'll just read the blurb. At the turn of the century, Angelica Devereaux is 15 years old. Her mother, a widow, keeps a grocery shop in a dreary provincial back street, working hard so that Angel can better herself. The headstrong angel, however, rejects her mother's sacrifices and retreats into a world of romantic dreams. Alone in her room, she plots an escape, her escape route. Spinning fables at once extravagant and fanciful. To those around her, this is simply full de grandeur, but Angel knows better. She knows she is different, that she's destined to become a fetid authoress, owner of great riches, and of the mysterious Paradise House. Yeah. This is a book about a woman who is delu delusional. This is a story about this woman who, I'm not, I'll be smart to you, just kind of get, get her, get her understanding of this world. This is how it opens. In the vast vicinity of the Imperium, Miss Dawson read, can you tell me what Imperium means? It means, Angel said, her tongue moistened beyond her lips. So you moistened her lips. She glanced out of the classroom window at the sky beyond the bare trees. It means the highest heavens. Yes, the sky, Miss Dawson said suspiciously. She handed the exercise book to Angel, feeling baffled. The girl had a re great reputation as a liar when a strange essay had been handed in a storm at sea. Miss Dawson had gone through it in a state of alarm, fearful lest she read it aloud or ought to read it before. She spent an agitated evening scanning Peter and Ruskin and others. They disdainfully searched ornamental prose through crescendos and iterations. Before she was saved, the piece was vulgarly overwritten. She had to find out who had written it. They think that Angel ripped off this book. Teacher thinks it was. So. Well, one thing I did notice is Angel is a working class girl. With grand romantic dreams. She dreams of her books becoming famous. She dreams of being a fetid authoress. She dreams of having all that. And it's interesting because the class system really comes into play uh, i'll get into that in a second okay this bit here as a famous novelist she will buy herself both garnets and emeralds a chinchilla wrap a sable muff her own carriage what has separated her from such riches was the time it would take her to transport was in her head to the book or the exercise book page of the exercise book which her mother thought was now fool foolishly wasting Yeah, but this shows how poor Angel really is because when she p finishes her book, this is how she gets it out there. At Easter, Angel finished rap writing her novel. On the day after Easter Monday, she wrapped it up and dressed it to the Oxford University Press for the dress she had found in one of her old school books. Yeah, she has to. She d she Angel has not read a book. She doesn't read at all. She doesn't really like books to other authors. They, to her, they're, they're meaningless, is her words. And her prose, when it is described, is very much trite, scandalous. And, of course, it's such a good, different kind of fiction and people kind of lap it up. If you want a modern-day equivalent, E.L. James's Shares a Great um, Trilogy. That would be the modern-day equivalent because it, the, the book is those books are so bad that everyone loved them. Is that they love bad writing? It's and it also kind of shows how a woman who going against her class, she wants to escape it, but I don't think she really can. Here we go. This bit, it's very long in the book. 
when Gilbert Embrace, the Gilbert Embrace, um, the publishers, Gilbert and Bryce had been divided as the readers' reports had been. Willie Bryce had worn his guts thin with laughing, he said. The Lady Arena, his favourite party piece, and he mocked at his partner's offence of it, his own version of Angel's language. Can you raise your constructing beer from those iridescent pages of simmering tosh and permit your modest, so modern thoughts to dwell for one modern thought for us perishing in a concentrated workhouse, which is where we shall, without a doubt, find ourselves upon the desians of the Perennery. Ask yourself, nay, go so far as to inquire of yourself. How do we live by such brilliant border dash and live, nay, not only live but exist to? You overdo the nays, said Fear Girl, but she does not. There's an air on every page. My wife counted them. Took every took even took the even pages I took the odd. We had to pay a shilling to the other for each of the pages where there wasn't one, and not a piece of silver changed hands from first to last. Interesting this book, because this book came out in 1957, okay, first published, and it's interesting when you read a book, because this book now is, obviously, it's seven decades, how l words have changed in stories. I mean, if this was being re rewritten now, it'd be much up-to-date, snappy dialogue. And it's amazing how, even though the publishers kind of condemn Angel for her long words. Ain sorry, Isabel Taylor also uses them as well in different kind of contexts. It's incredible. No, this book is absolutely incredible. So this is when her it's the kind of shows here you go, this bit here. This is when she actually meets her, um, her publisher, this bit here. As no be facetious, he thought, he poured out the tea and gave it to her. Do you think you will write another novel? Oh yes, I can let you have another one in a few months. So soon? But be careful not to tire yourself too quickly or write yourself out. I should never do that, she says simply, and drink her tea. What's the name of the new book? About an actress. Are you interested in the theatre, Miss Deverall? I've never been to one. Then you are a great reader, perhaps. No, I don't read much. I haven't got any books, and nowadays I'm always writing. So she doesn't actually read any books. She's writing a book about an, uh, a theatre. She's never actually been to one. It's kind of like she's constructed the world in her head compared to the reality of today. Even if you've never been to a theatre or been to a foreign country, if you're writing anything about that, you need to do some research. I remember when I was doing my dissertation for my masters, and even though they thought my story, okay, whatever they thought my story, one thing the all the examiners said was that my research in Japanese culture was perfect, and that that because I've done the research, like you wouldn't believe. So this is a story about a woman who raises, gets money, gets paradise house. She gets married to a guy called Esme, who basically is just after her money, and is a failed artist, and. Just the way the whole kind of nouveau reach kind of takes in, like this bit here, this bit here. In Longworth Gardens, though, Angel wrote not a word. She began to enjoy being well known as success. She gave parties and went to them, met a great many people, and spent a great deal of money. A large gallery, she was easily recognised on account of her air authority and absurdity of her clothes. At small dinner parties, she was dull and dominating. If for a moment she was not the centre of attention, she fidgeted and explained and interrupted. Angel Devereux was here the other evening, some people like to say. But she was not invited twice. Exactly. She is nouveau reach. She's kind of like going for the ranks of high society, trying to fit in. Never really does. But she becomes so delusional that in her, in her head, in her head, she is a fantastic writer. In her head, she's beloved and adored. She moves into Paradise, Paradise House, which she can't even afford. She... The reality, the reality and her fantasies are so different. It's just incredible. Now this book, this book, it's um, 252 pages and I just devoured it. The style of writing obviously is several decades ago and that's kind of but the, the theme of it. The theme of it. I mean, I'm on and off trying to write and it would be nice to be a fetid author. But 
choice. <laughs> but it, the, the reality of the world of a writer is actually pretty... You just writing all the time. So, this book is incredible. This book is... If Angel lived today, I could see her writing terrible fiction, putting it out on Amazon... And then complaining about how she's, it's not getting all the attention. Kind of like, okay, when the people who you meet on Twitter and they've written a book and they basically put out there, why has no one reviewed my book yet? So, if someone actually has that, so... I really, really enjoy this book. I really do recommend it. And it's just a classic piece of literature. And it was said by Antonio Fraser at the Funk. One of the most underrated novelists of the 20th century. And it really, really is. So I'm going to look up for some more of Elizabeth Taylor. And get back to you. Six months, 60 books here. Sign off. And bye now.